This isn't the Bureau's first time in Bright Falls. 1970, 76, 8... Last one was in 2010. It's not exactly clockwork, but... This town sees way more altered world events than most. We knew it was just a matter of time before the lake acted up again. After the AWE in 2010, the FBC's research department set up a facility. The Lake House. To study the threshold in Cauldron Lake. Find better ways to contain the entity inside. Your tax dollars, it were. When we detected a spike in paranatural activity at Cauldron Lake, before I even knew you were on this case saga, the Lake House was my first stop. I was shorthanded, hoped they could spare some help, maybe give us some intel on the situation. If I had any clue what was waiting for us in there, Saga, I'd have just kept on driving. This is Agent Kieran Estevez responding to an AWE alert in the vicinity. I need to speak with the Marmons. So much for the welcome wagon. You all set up the perimeter. We're on the threshold's doorstep, so keep your eyes peeled. Yes, ma'am. Agent Karen Estevez, requesting entry. I don't have time for this. This shouldn't take long, okay? You see anything, radio me. The lake house was run by the research department. Research and investigations don't really see eye to eye. What they call science, I call a violation of bureau protocol and human decency. Classic interdepartmental drama, your FBI saga, you know how it goes. Now, in retrospect, my low opinion of the research department may have clouded my judgment. Agent Kieran Estevez, Investigations Department. No one wants to check the individual carrying a firearm into a restricted government facility? No? Hello, and welcome to another exciting day here at the Lake House. As I'm sure you know, I am Dr. Jules Marmont, and this is my wife. Dr. Diana Marmont. And together, and we, we are, are the heads, heads of, of research, research at, at this facility. This facility. <laughs> we want to thank you all for helping us break new ground in our study of Cauldron Lake. That's right, Jules. But don't let our exciting work in threshold regulation and dimensional coupling keep you from observing the proper safety protocols. You said it, Diana. We run a tight ship here at the Lake House. So, always remember the three S's. Safety, security, and censorship. It's a C. It's a C. <laughs> what? Yeah. 
That is the joke, Diana. Well, it's a stupid, f wonderful joke, Jules. We'll see you down there. Yeah, that seems healthy. Access denied. Well, you are not keeping me out. Access denied. I need a key card with clearance. Ugh. This key card isn't gonna cut it. Dr. Marmont's not here. Nobody is? Hmm. I'll have to check downstairs. An experiment that bodes well. Changing passwords, huh? This should get me downstairs. As soon as I got in that elevator, my bad news detector started going nuts. Estevesta team, something's going on in the lake house. I want all nearby agents to- Oh, shit! Yeah.
a threshold event had hit the lake house. Now, it was the Marmont's problem. Our mission was outside. to get back to the elevator. One, get the lights on. Standing around in the dark near Cauldron Lake, they're not smart. regulation FBC weapon. The way I saw it, there was only one way out. Identify the source of the event and contain or eliminate it. Now, good news, I just had to keep going down. Bad news, the elevator liked to disappear. Jules's key card could be useful. Can't open it from the side. back.
things. You never really get used to the shit you see in this job, but you can learn techniques to adjust, to function. Take six deep breaths, then get to work. Find the source, collapse the threshold. Agent of the Federal Bureau of Control. I can assist you if you take no hostile action against me or any action that could be perceived as hostile. Do you understand? Well, I'll be damned. So, what kind of entity are you? You can speak. That means you probably imprinted on a person or retained some of your former self's information. Previously human, maybe? Okay, I can work with that. I just had an unpleasant encounter with some other painted individuals. Any relation? What does that mean? Paint no brush a self portrait! Okay, hey, hey, calm down! Fire in his eyes and hands and bones! You need to cease all hostility right <laughs> now! No. thing is really pissed off. Good news. It didn't try to kill me. Okay, baby stops. Access denied. Angry living paintings are not typically on the Cauldron Lake bingo card. Something different was happening at the lake house. And I couldn't let it escape. Bright Falls didn't need this particular cherry on its already shitty Sunday. stood back from the canvas. He didn't recognize the piece. Did he paint this? His mind was foggy, unfocused. He knew the Marmonts were putting something in his food. A man in a white coat came to steer Lane back to his cell. He did not resist. He was too tired. He lay on the bed, but the stench in his cell wouldn't let him sleep. An acid stink. The turpentine, the paint, it was all over him. Years of it, a thousand paintings, a thousand more to come. A putrid weight he could never wash away. Cold hate simmered below the mist clogging his thoughts. Hatred for the paint, hatred for the brushes, for the Marmonts, for himself.
September 12, 2023. Notes regarding a page of an hour late manuscript I found in the archives. I checked the records, and this page is not in our inventory. I believe it manifested inside the lake house directly. I won't be filing this page. It'll just send Jules into a panic. The page is written in Wake's usual style, so I can't say for certain if it's being literal or figurative when it calls us monsters. But what's interesting is that the page indicates that a painting succeeded in linking Cauldron Lake's threshold with our facility. Writing has always been a clearly superior avenue of research, but I never considered that the writing itself would dictate a different art form as the catalyst for our success. I cannot accept that. I can't allow Jules to stumble his way into success. Not after the years of work I put into this research. I got word yesterday that two writers are visiting Bright Falls. I will beat Jules to the finish line. here. The art was not art, just content for the experiment. There was a crack in the lake house. The marmots had let the lake in, but the water could not flow. It became trapped, stagnant, went bad. The truth was controlled here. The art was not art. Just content for the experiment. Typewriters. Oh, please don't let this be what I think it is. As you know by now, typewriters and Cauldron Lake do not mix. And a room full of them all clacking away. 100% bad news. Won't get me in. Seventh, 2018. Notes regarding Dr. Emil Hartman, founder of the Cauldron Lake Lodge. 
where he manipulated artists in an attempt to control the power of the shadow, have gone through his notes, which were confiscated by the Bureau after his arrest in 2010. Overall, Hartman's work was sloppy. Complete disregard for proper scientific method. But he was bold enough to try something we haven't. Our procedural writing machines are promising. But we could understand the effects of Cauldron Lake's threshold much better by observing live artists in action. Thanks to Hartman, we even have a list of prospects. Next step is to send Dr. Darling a request to bring some into the lake house for analysis. say no to extra firepower. Hmm. Back where I started. Spatial recurrence. Usually observes the law of three.
Loop three. Should be the last one. shifting phenomena. Wake's writing is being studied here. Do you know anything about him? Names don't matter. A thousand more to come. They say clear communication is the key to any relationship. You and I have some work to do there. What happened to you? Did the people here do this to you? Marmons! Clogging his head! You said Marmonts before. Do they do this? Where are they now? Misery! Hate. Tell me where they are! The man in the white car. Fixated on the Marmonts. What did they do?
threshold is the connection between a foreign reality and our own. Now, they all have their own rules, strange as they are, but the further down I went, the more chaotic this one got. Clearly, this was the Cauldron Lake threshold, but something was wrong. Well, more wrong than usual. Level wide lockdown. Please remain calm. Marmont looked at the painting. He didn't understand it. Saw only random whirls of color. Drugging Lane made him more compliant, but his work had turned abstract. Jules needed more art his team could parse, could test, trial and error. These abstract explosions of color complicated the data. His grip tightened around the letter opener in his hand. The piece of art he needed was hidden inside Lane. If Jules could simply cut the painter open and pull the painting out of him, he would. The overhead lights flickered. Jules would make Lane cooperate. No more drugs. Less carrot, more stick. Jules had to go faster. He wouldn't lose to Diana. Nothing else mattered. I can't paint anymore. I know you want me to paint, but I can't. I'm empty. Rodolf, no. You love to paint. And you are such a talent. This is just a classic artist slump. No. No. I... I hate it. It's just taking from me now. When can I leave? You said you'd let me leave. Ah, oh, Rudolf, but you volunteered to come, remember? We are helping you, like Dr. Hartman did. Perhaps you need to see our doctor? I can arrange that. No. No, that's... I am feeling better. Much better. I, I will paint. Ah, this is wonderful to hear, Rudolf. 
I knew you would come back to your old self. Floors on lockdown. paintings do they have this guy make?
Escobar's command. Facility. Sub-level one. You copy? No. Turn back. Area is extremely hostile. I'll need help.
when we think of art successfully affecting reality, we always think of Alan Wake and his writing. This could be due to recency bias or, or simply the amount of recorded evidence skewing our opinion. But also, I wonder if writing's very nature is an advantage. The text can describe events in such explicit detail. The story gives the shadow a, how you say, a blueprint, a map of what to make real. But not all art is like this. Music, sculpture, dance, cuisine. In our case, a painting. When the source material is open to interpretation, how will the shadow choose to interpret it? I think Diana will find the question very interesting. Most likely, she already has an answer. <laughs> That's why I love her.
Finally, someone who isn't a painting. Hey, hello. Who are you? <sighs> Sorry, I got a flow going. Can we do this later? No, we cannot. I'm Agent Kieran Estevez. I'm with the government, and I need your name. <sighs> I'm Ed Brooker, the playwright. And I'm hitting my stride here, so can you guys stop with all that banging and screaming? It's throwing me off. Where do you think you are right now? In an immersive writing workshop. Well, bad news, it's not a writing workshop. Good news, it's not a writing workshop. Right. It's a government facility studying the power of creativity. That makes way more sense. Look around you. How is this a workshop? You have to stay in character. I get that. I'm in a theater business, too. And look, the sets, the costumes, all great in that, you know, campy, 70s sci-fi kind of way. But you could dial down the role-playing like 15, 20%. Just some professional advice. What are you even doing? What are you writing? Well, after you all abducted me in the woods, uh, I've been working on this manuscript you gave me because you need it for some experiment or something. I, I kind of forget the premise. But, you know, I've had this block lately, and filling in the gaps of this story has really loosened me up. Copying the style is a nice constraint, but I still have lots of room to play. It's a solid creative exercise. Sir, whether you are aware of it or not, there is a situation here. I need you to stay in your cell until I can resolve the matter, okay? Uh-huh, got it. Hey, no one's been around with food for a while. I could go for some dinner when you have a second. Oh, and can I get my phone back? I want to call my wife. I don't know how Tammy found you guys, but she killed it. Five stars all around. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get right on that. My team was on sublevel one. I knew they were in danger. The Marmot. 
Mons turned innocent people into tools using the FBC's authority. They thought they were untouchable out here, hidden away in the woods? No. Actions have consequences. And I'm the consequences. Sub-level one. Bastard. Jules Marmont killed my team. He was taken by the shadow. I should get that gun while I'm up here. here for one week, make some speeches, and then fly back to New York? Uh, it's just a crétin, prétentieux. The jackass thinks he's a fucking rock star. And he made fun of the name. <laughs> oh, the shadow. The shadow is good. It's evocative. Such work, it can even, even. I will take what they think is possible. There was a crack in the lake house. The Marmonts had let the lake in, but the water could not flow. I 
became trapped, stagnant, went bad. The truth was controlled here. The art was not art, just content for the experiment. The contrived overlap rebounded on itself, compressing, compounding, reflecting, and refracting. An urban legend and a murder in constant imbalance, cause and effect hopelessly entangled. Arranged wrong, the dream logic flawed. The feedback loop doubled and redoubled, out of control. The pressure kept building, looking for a release. There was a crack in the lake house. Okay, this should get me down to sub-level five. And this should get me past any other problems. had changed Jules Marmont into a hostile, paranatural entity. That made everything simpler. No arrest, no paperwork. I could put him down like the monster he was. Please hold. Please this is not hold. Please hold. Please hold. We're holding a painter here. Rudolph Lane. Does that ring a bell? The shame of a man! I think you are, or were, Rudolph Lane. Himself! A self portrait! Make them see! Look, I might be able to help you. But I need information, cooperation. No brush! Just himself! <laughs> Rudolph Lane was dying. Both murderer and victim. Red hues ran down his hands. Was it Scarlet? Cadmium? Too vivid to be maroon. Names don't matter, he decided. Color was pure. Inspiring. For the first time in years, he wanted to paint. A self-portrait. To say goodbye. 
No. To make them remember. To make them see what they did. He slapped his hands against the wall to steady himself. He began from there. No brush, just himself. The strokes were crude, violent. The pain, misery, and hate he'd endured there. The fire in his eyes and hands and bones all spread into the shape of a man. It was quick, natural, like a heart attack. He slumped down to the floor, smiling at the anger he left smeared across the wall. office. Keep an eye out for more of these. Bastards.
Diana sat in her office. A weak death light kept the darkness around her at bay. The silence of the archive suited her. She scowled at a series of graphs when the room turned red. Alarms blared. Breach detected. Then the walls of the archives rumbled. A tremor in the bones of the facility. One by one, the red lights went dark as a wave of nothing poured in from all sides. Diana stood, but there was nowhere to run. The sheer depth of the darkness terrified her. She realized they had done this. Her and Jules. Their ambition. Their hatred. Her desk lamp flickered. In the brief moment before it all went dark, she found Jules a smile.
Thank you. from going down to that lab. And I, and I don't know, just inverting the amplifiers or misaligning the receivers or both. It's the same thing in principle. He booked the lab. Some big experiment tomorrow. This doesn't look like I can't style. find the details anywhere. Different artist. That bastard is hiding them. All those years, he steals credit from my ideas and my work, and now he's scared of being plagiarized? Oh, that is really fucking rich, Jules. Oh, and he's reportedly misplaced the manuscript pages I need for my work. Suddenly, the exact pages that I need to reference have just vanished. He is actively impeding critical bureau research. I mean, if he can do that, then what is stopping me from going down to that lab? And I, and I don't know, just inverting the amplifiers or, or misaligning the receivers or both. It's the same thing in principle. He booked the lab. Some big experiment tomorrow. I can't find the details anywhere. opened the door into Cauldron Lake's threshold. It was forced, it was unstable. Shutting the experiment down was the only option.
once did to you, to Rudolf Lane. I will do whatever I can to make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen again. The putrid lady could never wash away! The Marmots are dead. I, I don't know if uh, that's any sort of consolation, but... The threshold is tearing itself apart. I need to shut this down. You are a paranatural entity. That's all there is to it. stood in the forest just outside of Bright Falls. She watched her team detain Alan Wake and Ilmo Cosmo, stuffing them into black SUVs. She realized this was the moment Wake had been writing in the vision she had seen. The story was coming true. She pushed the thought out of her head. It had been a good tip, a way to find Wake. Nothing more. Alan Wake! After the threshold event collapsed, I was back at Cauldron Lake. But for a moment, I was somewhere else. I saw Alan Wake there. He was writing about me finding him in Bright Falls, in the woods. It was a good tip. I called the surviving members of my team, and I told them to meet me there. You know, these cases, they never get less ambiguous or easier. But this one, this, this was tough. Because protocol says entities like the Taken are monsters, threats. But the Marmots were monsters way before the shadow got to them. So at the end of the day, what's the difference 